Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Build. My name is James Michael Nichols, and I'm the editor of HuffPost Queer Voices. I'm going to be joined today by model and actor Jeffrey Boyer Chapman. I think we have a brief clip to play before he comes out. Okay, so listen, I know you weren't into the whole sissy bounce thing, and I get it, but imagine a show about underground dance scenes all over the world. More dance? Travel shows no, are tricky. Quinn, this, is, this is so much more than just a travel show. It's about the universality of the need for self-expression. I mean, now more than ever, when the world is so fractured, we need something that reminds us how much we all actually have in common. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I just think foreign crews and... And Alexi's gonna host it. Really? Yeah. He's, he's, he's so excited about it, Quinn. Wow. I mean, now that, that could be something. Yeah, Lexi has a huge following. I know, his Calvin Klein campaign was effing massive. So just as we're premiering Passport to Dance, we'll be getting free billboards all over Times Square. <laughs> Look at you, thinking like an executive producer. Finally, somebody is actually doing their job. Yeah. All right. Let's make it happen. For real? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Quinn. All right. <laughs> Hi, Jeffrey. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for coming, everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to be here with you. That was a clip from your critically acclaimed series, Unreal, airing on Lifetime, which just aired its, its third season. Is that correct? Season three is airing right now. Yeah, we've actually shot season four already, though. So seeing that, it's like just such a blast from the past for me. Right. It was so long ago in my memory. Well, for those of us that might not be that familiar with the show, can you kind of give us a breakdown of, of what it's all about? Sure. So it is based on the life and times of Sarah Gertrude Shapiro. She is the co-creator of the show. She is a self-proclaimed feminist who worked on The Bachelor for three years, which in Bachelor speak is nine seasons, as a field producer. Um, long story short, she had a bit of an emotional and mental breakdown after nine seasons of manipulating these contestants using her feminist, wily ways and um, feeling like she was destroying her soul in the process. And so left the re reality TV game um, and decided to document her own experience and tell herself her own story. And uh, the, it accumulated into Unreal. So we play um, five field producers on a reality dating show, kind of like The Bachelor, called Everlasting. It's myself, Shiri Appleby, Constant Zimmer, Craig Bierko, and Genevieve Buckner. And essentially it's just like uh, the five of us doing anything and everything we can in order to get juicy sound bites uh, out of these poor, harmless contestants just looking for love on TV. <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about your character a little bit, because you play an openly gay producer on the show. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your approach to that? How do you kind of envision the character? <laughs> I, well, luckily, I was born gay, so that was like a really good place to start. Um, you know, I mean, I think the the after four seasons of the show, the writers know us as cast members so well that they really play to our strengths. But that's uh, not at all how Jay started out. Um, we shot an original pilot for Unreal back in Atlanta in 2013 with an almost entirely different cast. It was myself and Sherry Appleby still involved, but um, a different woman playing Constant Zimmer's character, Quinn, um, and uh, Craig Bierko joined us for the reincarnation as well, but in that original pilot, Jay was straight. He was like a sleazy, womanizing hustler who just manipulated all of his contestants and would get them kicked off the show and then sleep with them. Um, I just, I love the project so much and was so drawn to the creators and the forces behind the scenes. Marty Noxon is the co-creator of Unreal and she was executive producer, showrunner, and writer on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which is a project I grew up being completely obsessed with. So when my team sent me the script for Unreal, I knew it was something that I had to be a part of immediately and found a way to make that character work. So I played him straight, sleazy, uh, uh, kind of like a dirty little hustler in the original pilot and just spending time with the creators of the show behind the scenes while shooting the pilot, they got to know me. And so when the show got picked up, Marty called me at home and said, we have this really rare and beautiful opportunity where we're going to be doing some rewriting and some recasting and we would love to write Jay after you. And I said, well, what does that mean? She's like, well, we want to start with making him an openly gay man. So I love that. Yeah. Right. Dream come so true. 
on the first two seasons, it in this everlasting kind of bachelor-esque world, you had a, a male bachelor as the mm. centerfold. And this, in this third season, it, it's a female bachelorette, right? Yeah. So it, would you consider this to be a feminist show? Kind of what's your headspace surrounding that? It, this show is absolutely, without question, I think one of the most feminist shows on television. I think not only does it like show loudly and proudly female empowerment, um, but... Um, you know, just really showcases the uh, disparities and the um, unfortunate reality that women within um, not only the entertainment industry and reality television, but in corporate America have to face on a daily basis. And no matter how good you are at your job, you will always have to um, answer to a man. Um, and the show kind of like breaks down that narrative and says, we don't need a man in order to get the job done. We are strong enough to do it on our own. What was your relationship like with reality television prior to coming onto this project? I didn't really watch a lot of reality television. I still don't, to be totally honest with you. I had seen a couple of seasons of The Bachelor when I was a kid, when I was like 15 years old and it first started airing and I liked it for what it was. But um, I've never really been drawn to reality television aside from the obvious RuPaul's Drag Race, which is just like the best show on television, regardless of whether or not it's reality. Which you were just on, right? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I came back for another episode uh, yeah, yeah. for this season that's airing right now, All Stars 3. The finale is on tonight. It's funny because in that episode you were in a Bachelor-esque kind of parody with yeah. all the girls. What was it like to do that? What's it like being involved with the girls in this way? I mean, I'm just such a super fan of the show. I love everyone from Rue and Michelle and Carson and Ross to all of the queens and all of the contestants. So this season being all stars, it was just like all of my favorite queens coming back to play and getting a chance to improv with them and play with them and get to know them was just an extraordinary dream come true. And not only that, but this episode, I got to bring my co-star from Unreal, Constance Zimmer, back up with me on the guest, on the Amazing. judging panel. And it was, we put her in full drag, gave her a full hairdo that she'd never done before, sweep those bangs to the side. My boyfriend did her whole look for her. It was mm -hmm. so much fun. I love it. Let's talk about this new project you have, a podcast that you're working on, Conversations with Others. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a bit about your kind of vision for what you want that project to be. Ooh, well, I mean, I think that it's uh, it's uh, uh, starting to become what it's what it what it is meant to be. The pro it came to me really organically. So I had done after doing my first episode of RuPaul's Drag Race uh, uh, just over a year ago. I went and did an episode of RuPaul's podcast, What's the Tea? And after I finished that episode, which was just like a really fun, spiritual, funny, irreverent conversation with RuPaul and Michelle Visage, uh, the producer pulled me aside and said, "If you ever want to do a project with us of your own, you have carte blanche. Uh, just let us know what you would like to do." So. I went back and finished uh, a season of Unreal and thought about it and was just really uh, uh, put together in my mind, like, what type of podcast do I like listening to? What conversations do I enjoy the most that have had the most impact on my personal life? Um, and so I went in and said I would love to do a conversational podcast series with people, um, influential and inspirational public figures who fall outside of the status quo and under the umbrella of otherness. So people within the entertainment industry who are part of the LGBTQ community, people of color, women who really fight against the grain um, and stand strong on their own. So that's what it is. It's a celebration of otherness. I have amazing guests this first season. Um, the first four episodes have aired with um, Jussie Smollett, Michelle Visage, Janet Mock. Next week we have Aubrey Plaza coming up. Just really fun, interesting people who, um, you know, aren't necessarily a part of the status quo, but the things that make them different are the things that I love most about them, and those are the things that I think are worthy of celebration. I love that. Yeah, I listened to the episode with Janet Mock, and it was very compelling. What's your kind of favorite moment that's come out of this whole process of developing the podcast so far? The response, honestly, the response has been so overwhelmingly positive. Um, I really did this for me. Um, listening to uh, Janet Mock's interview with me, as, as you heard, we talk about um, uh, how she's a memoir writer and she that we discover the power in telling yourself your own story. It's almost like a meditation when you can go outside of yourself and really break down your own life story from the beginning, middle to where you are now. You can see the parts of yourself that are worthy of celebration, parts of yourself that um, may need some nourishing um, and uh, and and it just it makes your whole life clearer. So each episode of the show has been kind of like an audio memoir. Um, each guest story as to where they started, the journey as to where they are now, and how they got there. And I think that the biggest surprises have come in some of, in some of like the most mundane or simplest moments throughout the course of one's life that you wouldn't necessarily think would be that impactful, but. Um, Timing is everything, and intention is everything, and um, when you get clear about who it is that you want to be and the type of life you want to live, a path will clear itself for you. So just hearing the stories of people who we may put on pedestals are 
or think of these as, as these extraordinary human beings, you realize through breaking down their life story that we're all the same, that we all have the potential to do anything that's, that's within us, anything that we dream of, just as these people have. It's just a matter of believing in yourself, getting clear about what you, you, know, what you're, what you want your life's path to be, and then going full force, and not listening to the people um, within the status quo, or uh, you know, the, the haters telling you that you need to dim yourself, or quiet certain parts about yourself to make it palatable or comfortable for like a heteronormative audience. Be you, and celebrate those parts about yourself that make you different. Yeah, I really enjoyed um, actually the the part of the conversation with Janet where you're talking about how you actually met her. Yeah, I was wondering if you could share a bit about that with our, with our audience. Sure. Yeah. So Janet, I call my uh, fairy goddess mother. So she brought my partner Andrew Fitzsimons and I together. So I was at home in my apartment in Brooklyn in 2015, hanging out in my underwears in my hot ass apartment, watching some Oprah Super Soul Sunday, and saw this like gorgeous black woman sitting under the oak trees with Oprah. And I thought, who is that? So I clicked on the on the video, watched it. It was Janet Mock there um, promoting her first memoir, Redefining Realness. I love the conversation. Janet is a trans woman, trans activist, and it's uh, her story from transitioning from the time that she was 15 years old living in Hawaii. And it really, it's like an edutainment. It just lays out the spectrum of gender in a way that I had never heard it before and never considered it before. I've considered this, the spectrum of sexuality, as I think we all have, but the spectrum of gender was a territory that hadn't really been covered before. I fell in love with it. Uh, read the book in a day and a half, tweeted about it, and said, I, everybody go get this book right now. It will change your life. Um, Janet just so happened to be with her, her best friend uh, at the time, my boyfriend now, Andrew, and she turned her phone and said, check out this, brother. Uh, and uh, Andrew, I guess, liked what he saw and reached out to me a few weeks later uh, via Instagram and said, y you're adorable. Can I take you out for dinner? And that was three years later. Janet Mock bringing people together. I yeah, <laughs> Janet Mock and Oprah. That's love right there. That's real love. <laughs> uh, as this podcast continues to kind of take shape and develop, who are some ideal guests that you want to bring on? Ooh, I mean, I, I, the first person that comes to mind is Michelle Obama. I just think she's just extraordinary, and she just like she represents so many different intersections of otherness. Um, I think she would be my my number one guest that I would love to have on. But I mean, hopefully, you know, I mean, the reality is, in, in things are changing within the industry, and um, a celebration of queerness and blackness and transness and otherness is a really beautiful focus for where we are at right now. And um, there's more and more people um, that are representing otherness within the industry. But um, hopefully, that those numbers will continue to swell and grow and I will have an endless guest list for the years to come as people learn to celebrate the parts of themselves that Hollywood may have been telling them for decades now to shh, shh, keep quiet. Yeah, I guess I think about the young queer kids kind of out in middle America too who maybe are encountering your podcast because mm -hmm. of What's the Tea with RuPaul and things like that. Mm -hmm. What do you ultimately want these young queer kids to take away from this project? To celebrate themselves and love each other, I feel like RuPaul's message is to uh, is how the hell how, if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you gonna love somebody else? And I feel like the next incarnation of that is uh, really learning to embody that, uh, loving yourself and celebrating yourself. And once you are filled up with a celebration of yourself and you have love spilling over, it has nowhere to go but to love other people and to celebrate the things about them that may make them different or um, you know make may make them like disenfranchised. Or um, so I feel like to have some some sort of representation, um, uh, whether it's a podcast or you know me playing a, a queer character on Unreal or being on Drag Race or whatever it is, to give these kids an opportunity that I didn't have when I was growing up. I didn't have the opportunity when I turned on my television to see people who looked like me, who represented me, who represented queerness and blackness in uh, a, a positive way. Um, so to be able to look to me or people like me, whether it's any of the guests that I have on my podcast or, or um, you know, anybody on television who is playing themselves uh, or playing queerness or otherness authentically, to be able to turn on the TV and look to them and say, I get it, me too, I feel the same way. Oh, you're just like me. You know, I think there's, there's power in that. There's power in that and seeing yourself represented in the mainstream and not just in the margins of the entertainment industry, but Hopefully one day, you know, like more so than just like flipping open the cover of a magazine and seeing people uh, that represent otherness within the pages, hopefully we'll be on the front, on the, on the cover of the magazines as well. Hashtag representation matters, right? Absolutely, uh -huh. yeah. Um, I was told backstage actually that you voiced the original Black Panther character on Nickelodeon kind of like years ago, right? Yeah, I don't want to say I voiced the, uh, the original Black Panther, <laughs> but yes, I was one. I, uh, I was on an animated series okay. uh, for Nickelodeon called Iron Man Armor 
Hard Adventures, and it was kind of like a teen exploration of superheroes. So um, I played young T'Challa, the Black Panther, uh, over the course of two seasons. It was just such a dream come true. I think it was it was a long time ago. It was like I was 24 years old when I did that, and at that time, I didn't even think it was fathomable that they would create an entire franchise around that character and have like such a beautiful celebration of blackness. Um, but times have changed, and thank goodness for that. Well, what can we expect next from you going forward? Well, we have a whole next season, new season of Unreal coming out. I mean, we have, yeah, uh, episode four of Unreal is coming up on uh, this coming Monday, as well as all new episodes of my podcast, JBC Presents Conversations with Others, coming out every Monday morning. We have season four of Unreal coming out sometime next year, and then... I guess we'll see what happens in the meantime. I have this really, I, thank goodness, I just shot two seasons of the show back to back, so now I have a little bit of time, downtime to myself to chill out, fill myself back up, reflect, maybe do some writing, and yeah, live my life. <laughs> I think we have a few audience questions. Excellent. <laughs> Yeah, Hi, hey. how are you? Hi, I'm excellent. How are you? I am well. What's Thanks your name? for asking. Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, I was wondering, if you were to actually produce a reality show or create one, what mm. would it be? Ooh, that's a really good question. You know, I was actually just watching um, Ellen Page's show today on Viceland Gaycation, and I thought that was beautiful beautiful and brilliant. I think that I would do something along the lines of that. Not necessarily like a competition reality show, um, but something that just um, uh, explores marginalized communities of people that don't necessarily have the spotlight put on them very often and just showing that, I think the power of that and the couple of episodes I watched today was showing how much we all actually have in common. You may think uh, of these groups of people, um, you know, uh, people from the queer community in, in France or in Saudi Arabia or wherever, and you may like other them immediately because you think I can't possibly have anything in common with them. But once you start ha having a conversation with anybody from those communities, you realize we all have far more in common than we are unalike. You know? So discovering, I think anything where you can discover that common thread of humanity, that universal thread, is something that I would be interested in doing. Good question. <laughs> Who else? Hi. Um, hey, what's your name? Bennett. Hi, Ben. Hi. Uh, I was wondering if being on Unreal has affected how you watch reality shows, uh, and more specifically, if you're aware of like how the season of The Bachelor ended, and if because of Unreal you have any thoughts on that you want to share? <laughs> Ooh, you're a Bachelor fan, huh? Um, I it's it's actually really funny. My friends call me like the like the BTS guy now, the behind the scenes guy, like the the spoiler spoiler alert when I walk in the room, um, because that's all I can see now. All I can see is like the the machinations of it and like how the producers get their greasy little hands into uh, into all aspects of reality television. Um, so yes, it certainly changed the way that I I know how the sausage is made now, so I can't necessarily just enjoy the flavor of it, right? Um, which is which for me I love. Like I love like breaking down the veils of illusion in life, not just the entertainment industry, but in life, because I feel like it just uh, it's like the um, once again it just it it it's that like great common uh, denominator that brings us all together. That when you uh, like kind of dismantle the illusion of um, uh, you know like the grandeur of reality and that whole facade. Um, it just makes it more interesting to me. So yes, I think that I definitely have switched the way that I watch it. And the Bachelor finale, did y'all see it? Where, is his name Ari? He chose one girl and then broke up with her and then proposed to the other one. It's like, what? What is that? For me, that was just like, I was like, this is straight out the pages of Unreal. Like, how have we not done this already? It's too brilliant. I think there's a million reasons as to why and how that could have happened. But my like first guess is he chose the girl. The producers were like, mm -mm. like if you if we're gonna like make a spinoff series with you and somebody else, I think that that girl will be far more interesting. So that's where my mind went. But it's good TV, right? It's good TV. <laughs> we're talking about it now. So <laughs> uh, one more. Yeah. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Uh, Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Um, so I'm such a good, uh, such a big fan of Unreal. I love your character. Thank you. Um, and one thing I especially love about him is that he doesn't hesitate to kind of call everybody else out on Oof. their nonsense and like when they've gone too far. Yes. Um, you mentioned that they kind of rewrote your character. Is that something that was in the original um, version of you, or is that something you kind of workshopped with them? I don't think it was in the original, and I didn't. I certainly didn't workshop it with them. But I feel like when I walk in the room, like the library is open, like it's like it's the reading season is on. I just kind of like let everybody know exactly what it is that I'm that I'm thinking and feeling. I think that's what it came from. Honestly, was shooting the um, second incarnation of the pilot, and throughout the course of the first season, 
when you watch the show, like the stuff that comes out of these two, the stuff that comes out of their mouths and the, the things that they do, it's like actually horrific that two human beings would think that it's okay to behave this way with anybody else. So if anything, it was just the camera just like catching me, just looking at them like, what the heck is going on? Like just me like genuinely shocked at some of the dialogue and storylines. So I think that's where it came from, honestly. Just, you know, my uh, inability to be able to like uh, uh, contain my actual feelings and thoughts and emotions about it. And the writers were just like, let's write this in. <laughs> All right, Jeffrey, it's been a pleasure. Oh, uh, we're done already. We're done. Yeah, you can catch right. On Real airing on Lifetime <laughs> season, uh, season three right now. Correct. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. <laughs>